Welcome to episode number 36. I'm CJ Wellerman. Thank you for joining us. This week we call on the international community to deliver justice, security and peace to the more than 1 million Rohingya genocide survivors who remain homeless. But first a quick reminder to click on the subscribe button below so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Now let's get into it. It's been almost four years since Myanmar security forces launched their most recent campaign to annihilate the country's Rohingya Muslim minority which the United Nations described as textbook ethnic cleansing. But the world has failed on its promise to deliver more than 1 million genocide survivors security, citizenship, repatriation and reparations. Simply put, the Rohingya has become the world's forgotten people. Today, roughly 1 million Rohingya Muslims remain homeless and stateless in squalid refugee camps along the Myanmar-Bangladesh border. Like this one here. Play the clip. We're here in the Balakali refugee camp in Bangladesh on the edge of the Myanmar border. It's just over there. This is one of the largest refugee camps in the world at around 400,000 people and conditions here are incredibly tough. People live in bamboo shacks, they have dirt for floors and their roofs are little more than tarpaulins held down with more bamboo, pieces of wood and brick. Another 200,000 remain trapped in small villages and townships throughout Rakhine State or what the chairman of a local Rohingya welfare committee described to me as a genocide zone. They are trapped because if they flee towards Bangladesh, they risk being killed by landmines planted by the military. And if they flee towards the south, they are picked off by Burmese snipers. So how did this all come about? Well, we go back to 25th of August, 2017, when Myanmar soldiers accompanied by local Buddhist militias launched a wave of attacks on Rohingya villages in the northwest corner of the country, carrying out mass killings, gang rapes, looting, and the destruction of property. Watch. It's a chilling and detailed account of what can only be described as a premeditated massacre. The photographs provided to Reuters by a Buddhist village elder don't lie. The first, the news agency says, was taken on September 1st and shows the 10 Rohingya captives lined up in a row. The second, taken the day after, shows their slain bodies in a mass grave. Their ages ranged from 17 to 45. Among them were students, fishermen, farmers, shop owners, fathers. They were all part of the same Rohingya community from the village of Indin in Myanmar's northern Rakhine state. According to Doctors Without Borders, more than 10,000 Rohingya were killed and 18,000 raped during the final three months of 2017. Myanmar soldiers were ordered by their superiors to shoot all you see. Roll it. Today, Myanmar forces are using the same tactics they perfected during the Rohingya genocide against pro-democracy protesters as the regime rounds up, tortures and kill all those opposed to its unlawful and authoritarian rule. But abandoned by the international community, the Rohingya have also been subject to cruelty at the hands of the Bangladeshi government, which has expectedly grown tired of footing the bill for humanitarian aid. It has thus begun relocating tens of thousands of Rohingya to a remote and flood-prone island, where the Bangladeshi government has constructed a prison-like camp. Go. It was a mistake to come here. I won't suggest others come here. We are worried about storms and floods and how to survive under such conditions. Aid agencies have warned that with the cyclone season fast approaching, people on Bhashanchar could be stranded and face food shortages when major storms strike. The International Red Cross says there are too many uncertainties. Meanwhile, the living conditions for the nearly one million Rohingya living along the Bangladeshi border have gone from bad to worse causing irreversible damage to their psychological and emotional well-being. Remembering these are an already traumatized people, having witnessed the killing and raping of family members, friends and neighbors. Here's Dr. Rupa Patel to explain. Play. Their houses were burned to the ground. Men were shot to death, leaving widows. And these widows watched their babies thrown into fires. Their breasts were cut off and they were gang raped. 
Now, if all of this weren't bad enough, then consider these refugees are also victimized by violent gangs, like this attack carried out in October of last year. Play. Several people have been killed in an attack at a Rohingya camp in Bangladesh's Cox's Bazaar on Friday, according to police officials. It's the latest incident of violence in the world's largest refugee settlement. A gang armed with guns attacked a religious school before dawn in Cox's Bazaar's Ukiah area. Teachers, volunteers and students were among the dead, according to a senior member of the police. These refugees are also exposed to floods, disease and fires. And on Sunday evening, yet another massive fire broke out in Kutapolong refugee camp, leaving 5,000 homeless. Go. The Bangladeshi government has also begun demolishing Rohingya shops and closing their schools which one refugee described as a stab in the heart, while another said, and I quote, this completely breaks the Rohingya community to its core, as education is the key to our resilience and hope, end quote. Clearly, these camps are not a long-term solution, as they do nothing to provide the Rohingya with their basic economic, social, and educational needs, which is why so many have become victims to unscrupulous human traffickers who prey on the vulnerable and desperate these vultures promise the Rohingya safety and salvation in neighboring countries such as India, Indonesia, and Malaysia. They are lured onto rickety boats for dangerous ocean crossings. Roll the clip. But these beatings are hardly the worst of it, with many either drowning or dehydrating to death aboard sinking and broken down boats, like this one last year. Go. Out of the darkness, figures emerge. Emaciated, exhausted, their eyes a mirror of the horrors they've experienced. Clutching their children, or what's left of their belongings, they stagger ashore. The final steps almost too much for some. At least two dozen Rohingya refugees are said to have starved to death on board after their boat failed to reach Malaysia and drifted for weeks. Even if they make it safely to foreign lands, they are typically subjected to abuse and persecution at the hands of hostile government forces or anti-Muslim extremist groups, which is exactly what happened to Rohingya refugees when they were attacked by Buddhist extremist groups in Sri Lanka a few years ago. Watch. Sowing hatred and fear, dozens of protesters led by extremist Buddhist monks stormed this building housing 31 Rohingya refugees from Myanmar. This is a terror group that lived in Myanmar. We saw in recent times they murdered monks, killed women and children, and also attacked 18 police stations and an army camp. Finally, Aung San Suu Kyi attacked and expelled them. Some of those taking part in the attack had been encouraged by live videos streamed on social media, urging people to join in. Surely enough is enough. The international community must increase its pressure on the Myanmar government through sanctions and diplomatic means to provide an opportunity for the Rohingya to return safely to their homes, with full citizenship rights along with access to education and employment. And the military must also be held accountable for atrocities has committed because doing so will have a preventive effect in stopping future attacks against the Rohingya. Anyway, that's a wrap for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please like and subscribe to this channel and help spread the word with your friends and family on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And we kindly ask you please support this endeavor by becoming a member of this show at patreon.com slash CJ We can't produce, sustain and grow the show without your help. We offer exclusive benefits to those who do. But for now, good night, good morning or good day, wherever you are and stay blessed. Music